um, welcome again to, uh, to a new APSIA webinar. Um, this is the second webinar of the week. It's been a busy week already. Um, two days ago, we spoke about uh, very innovative uh, African energy startups. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a different kind of topic uh, of the solar industry, um, specifically about utility and CNI projects. Um, and how to optimize their performance. Um, this is, of course, always with, a, with an eye on enhancing and increasing the profitability of projects. Um, sometimes we think that it's just a question of putting out solar panels and everything will flow smoothly, but actually it isn't always smooth sailing. And today we have uh, three experts joining us today who are going to be telling us a little bit about their experience and their advice on, on how to make sure that your projects can be the most efficient and the most profitable uh, possible. Um, so before I introduce our first speaker, I would like to, um, as usual, for those who are following us regularly, uh, share just two small housekeeping uh, items. Um, today's presentation, uh, the, the slide decks of our presenters, as well as the recording of this session, uh, will be shared with you after the event. So don't worry about this if you're not able to, to follow the entire, um, the entire uh, session today. No problem, you can still catch up on this later on. Leoncy will share all the documents probably by tomorrow as soon as we're done with post-production. And then the second small item, just to make sure that we get communication right uh, and that all your questions are being properly addressed. Um, there's two options at the bottom of your screen if you're a listener. There's the chat option and there's the Q&A option. Um, really, if you want to, to ask a specific question to one of our presenters, I warmly invite you to submit that question through the Q&A option because this is recorded and we will be able to share the questions so our speakers can potentially follow up with you directly after the session if we don't get to address your question during the session. And if you want to communicate with all the other listeners, if you want to say hi, if you want to comment on some of the presentations, then the chat option is what you want to use. So that's enough for me. And I would like to introduce our first speaker of the day, a uh, very familiar face if you're following us uh, on a regular basis, but also if you've been in solar in Africa for some time, then I'm sure you know Titus. Uh, Titus is calling us today out of uh, Kenya and representing Jinko Solar, uh, where is the technical services manager. Um, yeah, about 10 years, he's been working on some, uh, some pretty cool projects, um, hybrid projects, off-grid projects, including PV, uh, PV diesel storage, um, and really focused on, on all the different steps of, uh, of the, the project development um, from the angle of an equipment manufacturers, but really um, working hand in hand with his customers uh, in terms of pre-sales, in terms of after sales, and also during, uh, during construction. And so I'm very pleased to, to welcome you again uh, for a new session today, Titus. Uh, I invite you to turn on your camera and unmute yourself. And I will immediately give you co-hosting rights so you can share your screen and start your pure angle on how to optimize efficiency on, uh, on new PV projects. Thank you so much, John, and um, I really appreciate and uh, also to all the attendees and um, I also really appreciate that you managed to join today and um, we really hoping that this is going to be an exciting session. So um, allow me to just share my screen for a short presentation. Um, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And um, I think I don't have to do my introduction anymore. And thank you, John, for the introduction. And um, for this to start off, is it, um, I'll just uh, give some brief highlights just, uh, about Jinko Solar, that is for the benefit of everyone. Then um, I will also uh, dwell into uh, some bit into uh, the PV module technology. And um, uh, basically with main focus on the new anti-technology modules. 
that is based on TopCon and um, also the impact on the, the applied costs of energy. So we'll have in-depth discussion on that. Then um, then finally, we'll do a small uh, conclusion and also Q&A that will come up the odds. And um, I'll go straight into the introduction. That's just to um, get to understand more on the, with Jinko Solar. So Jinko Solar is basically a Chinese model manufacturer that been in existence since uh, 2006. Uh, uh, been leading globally in terms of cumulative model shipments that is more than 100 gigawatts. And, um, and currently is that we have a market share of uh, more than 14%. There is um, an also an annual global capacity of PD modules of um, uh, approximately 45 gigawatts plus. And, um, and uh, also from the recent results is that we've also been announced as the um, uh, leading module shipment uh, uh, in terms of leading module shipments, that is for Q1, that is having shipped more than 80 gigawatts in uh, Q1 of this year. And um, as a manufacturer as well, is that our investment also, we invest usually, that is close to um, uh, 400 million, um, that is US dollars, that is on our research and development. And um, with regards to this is that we've actually been recognized as having uh, the most reliable PV modules in the market. And from the most recent uh, PBEL, that is a model liability scorecard, is that we managed to appear as the top um, among the two most uh, manufacturers that have been actually top performance since the year uh, 2014 all the way to 2022. So you can actually see that there's a bit of uh, consistency. And um, also something not about that is that um, our PV modules actually perform so well in almost all the categories, in all the liability categories. And um, as a manufacturer as well, as uh, mentioned, on the, is that uh, we actually um, uh, predominantly our core business is uh, PV module manufacturing. And um, we also have other business lines, including energy storage division, um, also having a water pumping division and also lighting divisions. But our core business is solar PV modules. And um, in the solar PV module uh, portfolio that we have this year is that we basically have three series of products that is the Tiger series, we have the Tiger Pro series and also Tiger, Tiger Neo series. And Tiger Neo is basically um, a, a new module type that we actually launched this year. And um, we, we pride that uh, it's actually gained some, uh, it's more of changing the discussion in the industry right now that we're going to look into maybe in the next few slides. But in terms of our portfolio is that you can see that it's actually quite diverse modules all the way from 375 watt peak and also up to uh, 610 watt peak that is currently in production that is for both n type and also p type and um, the other thing is that um, to look into the next session now on um, uh, pv middle technologies on how also this can actually impact on uh, project cost of energy and um, uh, basically for C and I and also util scale uh, projects and we're also going to look into some bit of uh, uh, some bit of examples so our main focus in this is that our reference technology will be on topcon and we will try to uh, basically compare it with also uh, what is happening generally in the industry and um, to start off with my presentation I want to just give some brief highlights on the uh, what is uh, LCOE? So LCOE is basically uh, the costs of uh, uh, the levelized cost of energy of um, any project, of which are focused now in, in solar PV uh, uh, utility scale or CNI projects, which actually encompass a division between um, uh, the cost, the overall project cost that is over the lifetime of the project, either 15, 20, 25, or, uh, or 30 years, then divided by that is the total energy generation over the lifetime of the project. And um, I can say generally is that um, LCOA is one of the indicators and um, is one of the ways of actually uh, uh, comparing different projects and uh, also uh, technologies for different projects. And uh, what we've seen basically in the last few years, is that, uh, let me say in the last less than three years, there's been significant reduction in the uh, levelized cost of energy, especially um, uh, for renewable energy technologies. This includes um, uh, onshore and also offshore wind and also uh, solar PV as well. And um, you can see that uh, basically from this uh, from this graph that is from uh, the uh, annual energy outlook that was just released in March this year, is that uh, the cost of energy is basically predicted that it's going to be uh, reducing uh, significantly to uh, uh, actually less than forty dollars that is per megawatt hours per megawatt hours that is for both onshore and also uh, uh, and also solar uh, solar PV as well. And uh, this is more of uh, very competitive compared to uh, traditional use of traditional fossil fuels and also um, coal as well. So, and um, one of the 
the main contributions that is for um, uh, lower levelized costs of energy is basically not only on the reduction in the prices of uh, uh, solar PV components, including solar PV modules, but also an improvement in technology. Um, which basically leads to uh, overall improvements in the uh, performance of few projects. Then um, notable to note is that um, the cost, uh, actually uh, the overall cost of the project is that uh, uh, PV modules accounts to more than 40% of the overall total project cost. And actually is that that's why it's a main component that this to consider. And also the technology choice is also something of uh, uh, huge consideration that also needs to be uh, taken keenly. And um, that is regards to the choice of technology. And um, one thing that I want us to look into um, uh, is the temperature coefficients on uh, the evolution for the past few years and also uh, the implications uh, uh, for solar PV projects and also not only in Africa, but globally. You can see that um, most of the projects, uh, let me talk about Africa, is uh, actually installed in um, uh, projects of uh, regions of very high temperatures. And um, ideally, project uh, temperature coefficient would be very, um, uh, very important in this case. As you can see on my graph on, um, on the left, you can actually see uh, that is in comparison of two modes of different technologies. The first one, uh, the first one is actually N-type. Uh, the first one is N-type that is uh, with top one technology that is now um, uh, that is now the blue blue curve. Then we have the um, a red curve now with a normal uh, monopack module, and uh, you can see the performance how it compares initially that um, at um, uh, at maybe uh, at um, at uh, standard temperatures, let's say uh, at STC, they say at 25 degrees Celsius, there is not much difference in performance. But as the temperature, cell temperature, or body temperature increases more than 25 degrees Celsius, is that uh, the temperature coefficient plays a significant role. And you can see that at 55 degrees Celsius, the difference in performance is close to 1.5 percent. So at even 65, you can see the difference goes to uh, even more than 2 percent. And you can see the evolution is that uh, when we had polycrystalline panels, we had 0.4% uh, per degree Celsius, then we had mono standard at 0.38, uh, then 0.37 for monopark full cell, then uh, for monopark that is half cell, we had 0.35. And now the current one, the current standard is um, adding to be uh, minus 0 0.3 with the new uh, n type of hormones. So you can see that there is basically significant change. Uh, with regards to the developments of um, uh, that is model temperature coefficient. The other thing is that um, we're also looking into is uh, basically the warranties. You can see that um, for the past few years, is that uh, 25 years uh, performance warranty has been standard. But now well, with the current developments, uh, with the introduction of N-type or rather the entry of the N-type modules, we're now seeing significant change now instead of 25 years, we're now seeing manufacturers, including Jinko, actually providing 30 years uh, performance warranty. And not only that, if you also look into the yearly degradation and also the facet degradation, there is also improvement from 1%, uh, that is from 2% for the past year uh, to 1% uh, for the first year and 0.55% uh, to 0.4%, uh, that is for uh, the subsequent years, that is from year 2 to year 30. So you can see that at the end of 30 years, is that manufacturers, including Jingo and actually in the new modules, can actually guarantee up to 7.4%. Then, um, the other thing is to also note is that most of uh, large scale uh, ground mounts and I and also util scale projects now uh, in development are only considering bifacial modules basically uh, be able to uh, make sure that we achieve lower LCOE. And not only that is that um, uh, for bifacial modules, one of the main factors, or rather key decision factors, is also the bifacialty factor. With the current that is uh, monopark modules, is that the bifacialty factor is actually uh, 70%. But now with the new modules, that is the new N-type token modules, we are talking about 85% bifacial factor. You can see now increasing the bifacial factor from 70 to 85% actually results to um, uh, increasing the uh, rear gain or other rear side generation by close to 2.03%. Uh, that is actually very significant. In that um, you can see now based on this is that if the gain from a normal uh, monopack module was around 9.45 percent with n type now using top one technology you can see that uh, with 2.03 percent can actually achieve close to around 11.5 percent in terms of uh, rear, uh, rear gain or rather from uh, uh, rear generation and then um, also with the new module technologies, there is also a consideration with regards to uh, performance at low light environments because uh, ideally uh, better performance at low light environments that assures that you can actually have generation from early in the morning to late in the afternoon. 
And you can see now with the end time, because of the law, uh, shunned resistant losses, it can actually result to um, that is better performance at low irradiance. We can see at less than 600, at less than 600, it can actually result to uh, better performance compared to uh, the normal monopack modules. And you can see with this is that we have longer uh, longer hours of uh, operations of uh, project operations by close to um, uh, cumulatively one hour in a day. So basically, uh, that leads to uh, overall improved generations. Then um, the other thing is um, looking also uh, not only on the generation or rather on the performance. There's also the other aspect of long term reliability, and um, ideally reliability is one of the factors to be able to ensure that um, uh, the PV modules installed in the project are actually able to last uh, uh, with no problems for the whole entire project lifetime. And um, if you see clearly, is that most manufacturers have been providing in five years product warranties, uh, that no product but uh, performance warranties, uh, but the new ones are actually providing um, uh, thirty years product warranties, but that is not only sufficient is that there needs to be a guideline on whether these modules will actually withstand uh, the extreme environmental conditions and if you check with this is that uh, the one way is to do advanced uh, reliability tests that is by doing a double ic test or rather triple ic test as you can see for this um, uh, can see from from this criteria and ideally is that the standard pass criteria for ic is that the degradation after this reliability test should not be more than uh, uh, should not be more than the five percent and what we're actually seeing from this is that um, uh, there is significant improvement because now the degradation actually less than even 3.5 percent even with the new uh, uh, with that actually double or triple IC tests. Then um, the other thing is that, that we have also mentioned is the facet degradation of uh, our PV modules, that is uh, with regards to uh, LID and also LEKID, where we are seeing now that 1% um, uh, for the first year and also 0.4% for the subsequent years is actually becoming more of an industry standard. Then um, now is that uh, to just give some uh, bit of uh, highlight examples is that we are looking into uh, three projects that is one of 10 megawatts and one of 100 megawatts that is uh, 100 megawatts to be able to see on um, uh, basically how uh, the choice of PV module technology actually directly influences and also impacts on the, uh, the project level as cost of energy. And um, we, we basically have two conventional modules. Uh, that, that is two modules. That is one of uh, normal P type uh, that is more pack 591. Then we also have uh, 605 now um, uh, anti token modules. And comparing this, is that all the factors remaining concern is that uh, the, the generation difference that we actually shown uh, in the previous slide that the generation difference can be up to a difference of uh, a difference of three percent. And in this case, is that um, with the generation difference of three uh, percent. Sorry. With the generation difference of three percent, the generation difference of three percent can actually see that the impact on LCA is close to around a uh, reduction by around three point seven percent, and also the increase in the profitability by close to around three point two seven percent. And also looking into other factors as well is that um, also comparing the yield for a, um, a hundred megawatt fusion scale project is that with an increase in generation by close to four point five percent because of uh, ideally the new module technologies we actually see a yield gain of uh, uh, close to more than four percent increase uh, in the yield gain then um finally is that looking at also this uh, this other project now uh, that is um, uh, also a utility scale project that is of 200 megawatts comparing um that is with uh, uh, the choice of n type top one model technology and also the normal p type regardless of the power class you can see that um yes for the six uh, for, for the second project we have for the second model we have 660 watt peak so that basically high power class and um, ideally would assume that with the high power class or other super high power class is that we can actually uh, resulting to the lower uh, balance of system costs. But um, in real sense uh, that if we are actually considering trackers for this project, one of the main considerations is actually the width of um, uh, the width of the module. So you can see that with a width of less than 1.2 meters compared to the width of 1.3 meters will actually result into um, a difference of up to one string per trackers. In, that in this case, that you can actually have up to four instead of uh, uh, three modules per trackers. And this will uh, influence in the overall truck cost and also have an overall influence in the BOS cost. And with this project is that we actually managed to uh, find out that the difference in the BOS cost actually is up to uh, a difference of 1.18%. And overall is that if, if I look at this BOS cost savings and also comparing the on the energy generation is that it can result into a difference of up to 6% in the, the levelized cost of energy. So um, with that in mind is that um, 
can actually see that uh, the choice of module technology um, has um, a direct influence in actually the uh, levelized cost of energy because it has direct influence on the, not only the initial cost and also it also has direct influence on the, um, uh, that is the module generation. So I, I think that is um, a brief of my presentation that will form part of um, um, basically um, our discussion today and also the Kenya session. Back to you, John. Thank you very much, Titus. Uh, very information-rich presentation. Um, I, I personally keep being amazed at uh, um, the continuous um, improvement in technology uh, that you and other manufacturers are, are able to, to realize. Because in the end, yes, those, uh, when you start talking about financing projects, um, especially for, for large magnitudes, those little percentage points do make a difference. And uh, it's great that you were able to, to really focus on the, um, on the main and latest improvement topics. And I'm sure many people will need some time to, to go back to your presentation and take a second look. Um, but this was uh, very helpful. Thank, Thank you very much. I would like to switch to our next uh, next speaker now, uh, Jibril Omar uh, from Ofgen is uh, calling us from uh, from Kenya, and um, I'm very happy to to welcome you, Jibril, because um, we've heard um, Ty to speak about technological aspects of things and, and what are the aspects that we need to look into to, to really make sure we get the, the most efficiency out of a project. Um, but now there's also like uh, the reality on the ground of developing projects, getting projects built based on the, the realities of the, the location and the clients. And, and this is uh, what you are ideally positioned to, to tell us a little bit more about. Um, just a word of introduction for those of you who might not know Jibril. He's the CEO of uh, Ofgen Energy, a company based in Kenya. Um, spent the last 10 years in, in the photovoltaic industry. Um, when I prepared this event today, I was uh, very, very pleased to see this little mention on your profile that says, I eat and sleep solar. I think it's, it says a lot about how passionate you are about your work uh, and how much dedication you, you, you put into it. Um, and on top of this, well, I mean, you're going to be talking to us about CNI today, but uh, I know you're also busy with more activities related to clean energy than, than only CNI solar. And so this is also very, very nice to, to know. Um, so without further ado, Jibril, I welcome you uh, to, to this session. And uh, I look forward to, to hearing what you have to share with our listeners today. Yeah, so thank you, John, and uh, greetings everyone from Nairobi, uh, Kenya. Um, greetings to everyone who's attended. Thank you very much for uh, coming through to uh, this uh, interesting forum for um, uh, renewable energy, uh, particularly uh, storage uh, discussion. It's always a very interesting uh, time to, or, uh, I mean, uh, subject to discuss and we're very as john mentioned very passionate and uh, about what we do uh, in the interest of everyone else i'll just uh, briefly introduce who we are as ofgen and then as we um, go through uh, my other presentation so if you'd allow me to share my screen and there we go Yeah, so um, so often, uh, essentially, we are a CNI company, and uh, what we do is we build solar power plants, um, and this includes for um, commercial industrial customers. We build on-grid and off-grid uh, solar power plants. Um, we have two business models. Um, that we, we use, which is outright EPC, where clients come to us, and then we build the solar PV for them. The other option is where clients don't, do not have the finance or would not uh, have no capacity to, would want to have the their, their finance uh, or their asset in their balance sheet. So we would invest um, on a power purchase agreement and we'll sell electricity to them at, um, 
at a subsidized or uh, discounted rate from either the national grid or the uh, off-grid genset uh, tariff which they are on. So um, to date, we've we've done over um, 11 megawatts or 10 megawatts on the commercial industrial space where we've built uh, solar PV. And interestingly, on the subject of storage, we've even done same amount of storage, about 10 megawatt hours of on storage uh, to date. Um, and they vary all kinds of storages, lithium, iron, lead, lead acid, and so forth. So as I said, our, uh, our agenda is brightening Africa's future through solar power. So we do project development and, you know, analyzing project uh, viability, you know, from technical aspect, commercial permitting and legal aspect to uh, all uh, stages of project development. We also finance uh, both for CAPEX free and power purchase agreement. Um, typical tenor is between 15 and 20 years. Um, we do also the outright purchase, as I mentioned. We also do uh, operational maintenance, uh, asset management. Um, typically, this is for the biggest uh, client uh, internal uh, uh, assets that we own. So we need to optimize and maintain the systems. Um, so the kind of region that we are at the moment is in Kenya, South Sudan, Uganda, Rwanda, and we're looking to expand to do West Africa, um, Southern Africa, and because the market has grown so much. So some of the projects that we've done, uh, if you can see, are off-grid projects, grid tied and hybrid projects. They range from flower tea farms, um, you know, off-grid lodges, and, 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 and so forth. Um, I'll skip this part on our project roadmap, but uh, in essence, we started in 2014, and since then we've grown uh, from zero kilowatt to 10 megawatt of PV and 10 megawatt hours of battery storage. So some of the clients that we've worked for um, and so forth. And some of the key partners that we work together with uh, the likes of Jinko and other tier one module manufacturers uh, on the side of suppliers on the modules, uh, inverters, SMA and Huawei, could we? And on the battery storage, Jinko also and other uh, battery manufacturers. Um, so I'll just quickly jump into the, the my presentation um, and there you are. So yes, um, as I mentioned, um, so yes, I think the most important thing today is to um, the discussion around uh, levelized cost of energy. You know, I'm, I'm I'm interrupting you for a second. You're still on your previous presentation. You need to stop sharing that one and then select your other uh, file so that everybody can follow. Uh, so stop. Okay, and then thank you very much. Thank you, John. Is that yeah, okay now? Yeah, okay. Perfect. Yeah. So I, you know, look, m most of the, the 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 current situation with COVID that we've experienced as a company and in the industry is that there's been a very high um, uh, cost of uh, components, um, including modules, inverters, mounting structures. Uh, We've seen modules going as far as as back as five years ago in terms of the costs and uh, you know availability of battery storage being very scarce and the cost having gone up and hence the importance to scrutinize and optimize uh, solar PV project even further for um, not only um, a return on investment but also on the side of, um, because you have to counter one side on 
where these costs have really gone up. And now you have costs that have gone up and also you have um, unpredictable weathers. So um, as a what as a company, uh, what how what do you do um, in order to um, optimize um, your systems? And so we see a lot of times that uh, optimizing the performance is a very key and very important aspect in a solar PV project. So as I mentioned, who we are earlier on and what we can do. So to date, solar power uh, potential in Africa, we see that uh, continent has a very high potential for solar PV. Uh, we receive more hours of brighter sunshine, uh, you know, than any other uh, continent on the planet. Um, Africa is also referred to as the sun continent. Uh, theoretical results of Africa solar energy is estimated at 60 million tera TWH uh, annual, which accounts for almost 40% of the global total. Um, from where I sit here in Nairobi, we sit in the equator and we get very good uh, amounts of sunshine as well. So, um, so tremendous uh, steady um, utilization of uh, solar power plant uh, in Africa over the very many years is something that we uh, as a solar PV company have seen. Um, I'll say key growth drivers are because of the population expansion and the, the uh, population growth, rapid uh, uh, urbanization, rural to urban migration, uh, which accounts to some of the 80% of the population in Africa uh, are based in the urban areas. So, and and so forth. Um, so what does it mean in terms of energy uh, is that as a company that uh, our focus has been on the uh, CNI is that when we sell electricity or we propose an outright purchase to customers, um, we need to optimize the system. And one of the ways that we normally would start with is because um, People tend to think that solar, or because of solar, um, now power is free, and you know uh, customers don't understand that. Still, there's capex that or cost that has been involved, and um, so what we've seen a lot is that the more uh, PV we we add into uh, uh, consumer uh, the client's facility, the more uh, electricity demand because the mindset has been, or well, now we have solar, so it is very free. Um, I'd say um, opportunities of optimizing the new utility and CNI solar industry has been on the strategic partnership, working with the, with the right uh, key partners in the sector, um, such as Jinko. And I think we've seen, uh, interestingly, the the recent uh, performance warranties that have, have really come up um, on the products alone, especially on the module side from 20 to 25 years to 30 years. And if you also look on the storage, battery storage side, it is pretty much uh, the same. I think it's an additional of about three more years. Some are offering as much as 13 years from 10. Um, so this is very interesting uh, new development that we are seeing and uh, that helps on the side of it. I'd say um, so strategic partnership and uh, areas that we can see uh, for optimization of the new utility. Uh, there's uh, developing of key partnership with the regional bodies governing renewable energy. Uh, association of the EPC supply and financiers to develop strategic plan of expanding solar penetration. Uh, on the incentives, uh, the re regulatory aspects, support for renewable energy, um, we are looking at developing key partnership with regional bodies, aligning with climate sustainable targets, clear transparent uh, procurement processes, and financing as well. Um, I'll just go back to uh, the issue of uh, optimization of the, the, the solar PV project. Uh, 
Now, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, um, what our experience has been that um, understanding of clients or uh, rather the off taker is the most important um, because uh, when you have PV that uh, you put up a solar PV plant and they, 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 there are a number of things, the understanding the, the power demand and what times their power demand comes up and also basically seasonalities. Like, I mean, I would say a tea factory, for instance, um, you know, um, would be off for like two days in a week because of maintenance and so forth. Uh, so how do you optimize uh, that some of the, the operations can be moved to when they solar PV? Um, so understanding of the customers is the most key important, uh, um, I would say, in order to optimize the, the performance um, and also understanding of the, the, the product. Different products uh, uh, include um, different regions and different weather. I'd say in Kenya, we have different uh, weather patterns. So in, when it comes to choosing the product, this is the most important thing, factoring uh, the region and, you know, the, the type of uh, the weather that that region has. So um, those are the, the key uh, elements. But uh, of course, as solar is a, a modular uh, machine or technology, and we believe every now and then the element of going back to uh, uh, monitoring and the, the performance and seeing how to more optimize. So monitoring is very, very key in, uh, in, in, in optimizing uh, a power plant. Um, for instance, we've seen a client who would used to provide about 60% from solar PV and battery storage. And after monitoring the, the plant for quite some time, we realized that we were able to um, push more uh, power um, at a different hours uh, and achieve more penetration if we had a more uh, discussion and recommendations for the clients to, to change their operations. Um, uh, I mean, I'll give a very good example, well, you know, one megawatt power plant with about 1.2 megawatt of battery storage um, and during um, midday when this is this is when the clients uh, are low in terms of um, de the demands are very low but also midday is when there's so much power generation so after a certain uh, you know period of time we reviewed and we realized why not uh, call in a few equipments at that time for instance heating of either uh, the most was water heating. And so we had to install new components or, on the facilities um, where once our battery storage were full and the solar PV was still generating, they will call in the, uh, uh, the, the water heating uh, section of the facility and they will, you know, uh, heat the waters at that point. So, um, Key important thing is uh, auditing the, the facility in the initial stage. And then, of course, uh, working with the right components and monitoring of the, the facility on a regular basis to optimize this. Um, yes, so thank you very much. That's from my side. Um, I'm happy to take my, more questions uh, moving forward. Thank you so much, Jibril. And uh, yes, your your comments have definitely uh, sparked the discussion on the chat section. There's uh, many comments there. And so let me take this opportunity to um, to invite all the listeners to um, to start submitting their questions to to our different speakers today so that we can take them on during the, the Q&A session. Um, and you've done quite a quite a wonderful introduction, Jibril, for our next speaker, um, insisting on the importance of monitoring, um, because our next speaker is uh, Maximilian Max Spanagel, who is calling us uh, from Germany. He was in Kenya not so long ago, but just flew back. Um, he's the COO of EcoFi, and EcoFi is a company specialized in 
monitoring um, systems, traditional systems, hybrid systems, uh, and also solar wa uh, water pumping systems. Um, Max uh, joined Ecofi in 2020, if I'm uh, not mistaken, and before this, he's been still working in the solar industry with, uh, among others, a company called Sahai Solar Engineering, uh, which is an EPC company for solar and water supply services across sub-Saharan Africa. Um, really a, a wealth of experience when it comes to solar water pumping and solar in general. Uh, to the point of uh, also uh, practicing some uh, some consulting aspects and, and lecturing at university. And today, Max will tell us a little bit more about Ecofi and also a little bit about a, a case study of uh, where monitoring solutions can, can make a great impact, can have a great impact on optimizing the performance of projects. So Max, I'm very happy to welcome you here. I will give you co-hosting rights so you can share your presentation easily and uh, please the floor is yours all right thank you very much john uh, pleasure to be here i'm very happy that i can introduce myself and ecofi and yeah have a discussion afterwards on the topic of c and i optimization so let me just share my screen which I, could, I hope you can see now. Yes, um, all is yeah, right. also, Thank um, you. We've heard the, uh, it's very crucial to have good components, good planning, good auditing, project management is very, very important in order to, to have yeah, efficiently running systems. And now, yeah, as, as already introduced, I'm going to take over on the topic of operation of the system, monitoring of the system, because also, once the system is in operation, there's a lot of yeah, things that can happen. There's a lot of money you can save or lose with good or bad operation. And there's always a, a technical side of the monitoring, but also a management side. And I want to give a very short yeah, introduction in a nutshell, have a very short, basic technical case study, and then looking forward to the, uh, to the conversation. And there you, thank you very much, Chipril, for already mentioning how important monitoring is. So, yeah, let's just start with who we are. We are Ecofi, Germany based in Karlsruhe, in the southern part of Germany, but our focus is on sub Saharan Africa. And um, yeah, we do remote monitoring control solutions, not only for the CNI sector, actually, we started in, in off grid in, in Eastern Africa. And um, there, as a start, we had a very um, strong focus on off-grid standalone and off-grid water pumping systems. But uh, through the time, because of the increasing demand, we, we shifted more and more also into the CNI sector. So yeah, right now we have projects in, uh, in 14 countries uh, all over the continent, also some in, in Asia or Latin America and uh, yeah, growing very fast. So we have uh, upcoming projects in, in 12 new countries. And for example, here you can see in, in dark green is where we are already present. And in light green is where we are going to uh, start to have new projects. So we work mostly with, with EPCs, O&M companies, operator of solar and water systems, and uh, yeah, a little bit also with NGOs. So yeah, let me show you uh, shortly what we do. So actually we have two parts. We want to offer all-in-one monitoring, meaning both the, the hardware aspect that you need in a monitoring, but also the software aspect. So here on the left side, for example, you can see um, our core features, the, the Ecofi boxes. And yeah, usually in a solar system, you, of course, you have some kind of uh, inverters, controllers, and we, with our Ecofi boxes, we communicate with most of them directly by interfaces so we can yeah, get all the, the data that is being provided by the inverters. And yeah, I would say 95% of the inverters that are on the market, we can directly integrate. Here are just some examples. And then depending on the project that you have, you may need some additional information which we can provide via sensors that we have in our portfolio, or we can also integrate your own sensors. 
for example, for a CNI project would be interesting to, uh, to measure the, the irradiation because you want to know the, the performance, uh, maybe also the temperature uh, in, the, in the technical room. Maybe if you have some batteries, you also want to have a separate battery monitoring. So we're very flexible on that hardware side. And then we, we work with Wi-Fi and uh, GSM. And uh, yeah, all our boxes are designed in a way that they can handle also very weak network because uh, depending on where your projects are, there may not be the, the best network. So yeah, it can already work um, as soon as there's a little bit of connection, also saves the data locally. So in case there are connection losses, it will just uh, transfer the, the missing data once the connection is back. And then all the data is being aggregated uh, in our Ecofi platform. Also, we can, inter uh, we can integrate on the software side existing data. For example, there are uh, inverters that already have um, data in their platforms. So this we can all collect in one central platforms. Uh, we could also integrate weather data, um, imaging, and so on. And then once the data is there, of course, there's a lot of things we can do. We can um, visualize the systems on a single view, but also an aggregated view so that you can do a fleet management. And it's not only a, a one-way direction, it also goes into the other way. So we can also control the system. We can control the, the inverters, change the settings, do remote troubleshooting. And uh, yeah, if we have some sensors and relay installed, then we can also control them. So yeah, we can uh, issue alarms in case there are any technical problems. We can issue reports like uh, technical reports, but also management of financial reports, which could be part of the billing later, check for the performance. And um, yeah, that's basically the, the part that we have here with the technician is more for the NGOs in case they don't have anybody that can actually um, solve the problem. Once it's been detected, then we can also make a match. So that's basically what we offer in a nutshell. And yeah, as I said, on the hardware side, we have different boxes. And those different boxes, we have to be able to cover a wide range of applications. So uh, it starts with a very small box. This would be um, the inverter box, which you could use, let's say, for a simple standalone off-grid system. And then this goes up to the, the premium box, which can be used basically in the CNI and utility sector um, for very large systems or if the systems become very, very complex. And just to show you the, the modularity and the, the flexibility that we have on the platform side. So we want to be able to, to cover wide range of, of applications and also um, to be able to, to cover the, those, the, those different kinds of projects that there are. So let's say these would be three examples of how the, yeah, the platform could look like for the end user. So let's say on the left side, you see a very simple um, system, let's say just a single user that wants to visualize the systems and have an alarm. And then there are also experts that say, um, I only need the data and I can handle the rest, which would be the one that you can see on the top. And then there can be very complex projects with a lot of stakeholders, let's say the, the technicians, the executives, the management, the, the financing party, and all those stakeholders are interested in, in different information. And this is something that we can do on a customized base so that really the ones that are involved in the projects get exactly what they want to know and what they need to know. So this means, especially in the CNI sector, the, the benefits of, of our monitoring is we are completely manufacturer independent. It means you can uh, choose whatever components you like. You can choose whatever inverter you like controllers and they will all be able to to integrate with our system then the reports can be in the technical management financial part you can monitor efficiently not only single systems but whole fleets of systems because you don't want to go into every system regularly you really want to focus on the the core kpis and only want to be informed whenever there's really the need. And um, yeah, also we do specific functions, integrations, and of course, what is, what is the most important out of it is it saves O&M and management costs. 
So let's give you a very, very short and basic technical case study, something that we've um, uh, discovered in one of our projects. So here we are monitoring a CNI system, uh, not the biggest one, it's two inverters that each have eight strings. Also, we, we had an irradiation sensor placed there, check for the performance. Um, there's a specific function that we've integrated, which is a zero feed in, because this one is in Kenya, and in Kenya, you're, you're not allowed to feed um, the power back into the grid. So there has to be a function uh, functionality that uh, prevents that. And yeah, sometimes a problem in a technical problem in uh, projects can be in solar projects can be that um, individual strings can fail due to uh, several reasons. It could be uh, a module or the the cables that are broken, and often in many cases this is not even detected or detected very late because the system will still run, but on, on lower performance. And in one project we've experienced, um, was a very badly managed project, we've experienced that there were several strings broken and the, the system was running uh, with 20% less power over several months. And this in the end means uh, the, the customer, the end customer has to pay a lot more than they expected. So sometimes the string monitoring can be provided already by the inverter. Some inverters don't have that. So for this, we have different um, um, other like sensors. In this case, a string monitoring unit with that we can monitor all the, the strings. So how does it look like on the technical side? So this is, um, uh, those are two screenshots from, the, from our platform uh, and the figures that show the, the strings all the strings in one graph of one inverter. So you can see um, on the top, this was uh, the current of all those strings. It was a cloudy day, so you can see it's going up and down a little, but they are all more or less the same. And then in the second image, you can see, okay, they, they still follow the same line, but suddenly one just drops to zero. So you see, okay, something has been uh, happening with exactly this one string. And then by having everything documented, which string is, uh, is being monitored, we could exactly say, okay, there must be some problem with exactly those, this string. And this means for the, for the operator of the system or the O&M company, they could directly go there, analyze that string and repair it. And this within, yeah, several, there, but basically directly. So you can directly go there, check it, um, take care of the problem. And um, yeah, otherwise, sometimes it takes a, a lot of time to, uh, to detect such kind of problems. And uh, yeah, also very important, um, this you don't, um, so basically we also offer intelligent alerts, which means you don't have to check on the platform if all the graphs are right, but you get the information directly in case there's something. And intelligent also meaning, for example, here, the, the string drops to zero uh, and then stays there. So you know, okay, there really has to be some problem. But uh, let's say there could be a measurement um, problem and it just drops to, to zero for, for like a second. And you don't want to be alarmed every time something like that happens or, or in the night, you don't want to be alarmed if the, uh, the string is um, at zero in the night. So, so this is what we call dynamic and intelligent alerts. So you really can rely on um, the, the technical alerts that we have out of the system, and then you can directly intervene. So this is just a very simple, basic technical case study. Um, let's maybe shortly uh, go through what, what also can be detected on a technical side. Um, so it's not even the uh, not not always a whole string that fails. It could also be just dust um, shadowing um, that have influence influence on the whole system, or a few strings that can be detected. The battery lifetime can be improved by monitoring single cells because uh, often it's it's a single battery, a single cell within the whole storage that can make problems and in the end cause um, yeah damage to to all the other components. Then uh, also temperature, which is very important um, to, to monitor in order to have a longer battery lifetime. Then also 
Um, I mentioned, of course, we, we offer platform alerts, but also we have on-site alarms and security measures. We need, for example, we, we also monitor the doors of the technical room or um, even have cameras integrated. So um, that's basically the, the security part that we also monitor. And what Jibril also mentioned, which is very, very important and crucial of monitoring is to optimize the loads because you're seeing both, you're seeing the consumption and the, the system performance, and you can see where are the, the points where you can match the consumption to the, to the solar system performance. So that's on the technical side. On the management side, again, uh, it can save costs by um, having proper fleet management, having customized reports, and by not checking the platform all the time, but just rely on the, the alarms or notifications that you get. So that's from my part. Thank you very much. I'm very much looking forward to the discussion, to the questions. Thank you so much, Max. Um, yes, very, very nice presentation to, to give like a broad perspective on, on all the things that are possible thanks to technology, your technology in this case, but uh, um, there's different, uh, different companies trying to, to help people with uh, digitalization and, and remote monitoring. And um, yes, the, the impact can be quite big, uh, giving visibility on the, on the operation of the projects. Um, I would like to, I'm looking at the time, we've been talking for a long, long time already, but that's uh, quite okay, I think, because it was uh, quite rich in, uh, in, in insights today. I would like to invite our three speakers to, to turn on their, their cameras and to unmute themselves so that we can all see them. And I'd like to, to shoot uh, a few questions to, to all of you. Um, and I would like to, to ask you to, to try whenever possible to keep answers relatively short so that we can tackle as many questions as possible. Um, and I would like to take this, uh, um, this first question from uh, Rugola. Um, Rugola was asking specifically about a, a specific kind of business, uh, which was uh, for powering ice plants in relationship to a, a fish uh, business. And so I would like to maybe extend this question and, and ask our speakers today, is there technology or are there specific approaches based on the type of activity of the client. Jibril mentioned something about a tea factory that has a special load curve and seasonality. Um, I would like to hear from you if, if, if there are some, some businesses, some commercial activities that, that require special equipment or special attention. And I'd like to ask the question first to Titus and then uh, to Jibril and Max. Yeah, um, thank you, John. So for that question is that um, ideally when it comes to fish, uh, of course, I think uh, uh, the, uh, was, I can't remember the name, but uh, I think it's referring to uh, cold storage. And ideally for um, cold storage, that means that uh, one of the key considerations is uh, uh, there is consistent supply of power. And uh, for this consistent supply of power, then that means that we need to, uh, uh, need to consider that is energy storage. Uh, that is one, uh, because um, we know that uh, either using solar or wind, that is intermittent in nature, and we need to have a way of storing storage, uh, that is of storing power at night. And um, even with storage now, is that um, there is also, because with uh, cost storage, there is also um, inclusion of uh, compressors and also condensers, which actually require uh, sometimes very high starting current. So with the choice also of the uh, PCS or other inverters, there is also that consideration as well. And um, the other thing that uh, comes in also is that um, if um, you ideally in the business of selling fish, like um, what you're referring to is that there is need also to uh, make sure that the cost of energy, which also will reflect into the actual cost of um, the products is also as low as possible. So with that is that it comes in into uh, ensuring that uh, with all the different aspects, that is from the choice of uh, the PV modules, from the choice of the inverters, from the choice of uh, the other components likes of um, uh, the monitoring platforms, is that it needs to be optimized to be ensure that uh, you're actually able to generate power at the lowest cost. 
So you need to look into basically all those factors. And uh, there are different scenarios in that uh, for solar. The different scenarios in some instances is that uh, uh, may need to consider maybe PV plus storage. Uh, maybe sometimes that can be expensive. Then they also need to maybe supplement with uh, maybe diesel genset as well, and also any other uh, 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 that is available energy sources. So that is also uh, some point of uh, consideration that needs to be looked into. But uh, with all that in mind, is that there are two things. That is one: the solutions need, the solution need to be viable that is technically viable, then uh, the other thing is that it also needs to be economically viable in terms of the cost of energy. Thank you. Jibril, on your side, when you are being approached by uh, different uh, commercial and industrial customers, um, is, there, is there an impact in your choice of solutions, in your choice of uh, technical components based on their specific activity? Or is it more a configuration aspect that you need to take into account and, and please unmute yourself yeah yeah so yeah john john i think most important is as we said is that um, um first thing first uh, is to uh, analyze the the, the client's uh, uh, power consumption uh, pattern um and uh, for for us uh, different solutions have different uh uh, different clients require different solutions. Um, if, for instance, you were to say uh, storage, there are clients that um, a certain uh, storage manufacturer would would not be the most ideal because of what their requirements are uh, com as compared to others. Um, and I think understanding of the client for us is the most, uh, I would say, the the most important part uh, in our recommendation for in order to be able to um, design uh, the right uh, solar PV pro, uh, uh, solar PV plant uh, for the client. Now, uh, for instance, in the case of the the, the cold storages, and um, as you are aware, that uh, solar PV um, tends to work in most regions where it's uh, the humid it's non-humid uh, region is uh, pv works very well with cold storage as in you need more cold storage uh, high temperatures during the daytime and in the evenings is um, the, the temperatures have dropped so the the demand for cooling now reduces so cooling itself um uh, cooling storage it is uh, a, a, a different technology for um, storage. This is how we see it, because um, in, in, in a layman is that if you have a client who has a cold room storage and um, you put PV, so what we normally would recommend is to just to up the, 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 the PV plant size by about 10%. So there's more uh, power generated and then the client would sort of um, increase their um, uh, storage uh, slightly higher than usual. And then when the PV goes down, then the battery, uh, I mean the, the cold room storage will go back to the ambient uh, required uh, temperature. So yes, understanding of the client and the solutions are both very, very important in optimizing uh, the client's requirement. Thank you very much. Over to you, Max. Um, based on the, the various projects that you've been uh, working on and, and monitoring, um, so once they are in operation, um, have, you, have you noticed some um, typical better technical options based on the nature of the business of the user? Or on the contrary, have you noticed fundamentally wrong technical decisions that needed some some modifications and then have improved the the operational aspects of projects or what is your view on on this side well yeah we are actually also monitoring um, specific cold rooms and um, yeah there's there's the whole layout um, issue of course and there it's very important to take a look okay what is my my use case um, also to plan 
like let's say don't don't plan it for what I have now, but see okay how much am I going to produce in a few years? So what are, are my my expansion plans? So this is something that has to be also integrated, um, so that not in in a like one or two years you come and say oh um, actually I need to to replan it again. So this is very very crucial to also have that factor included. And then what is very, very important, especially in cold rooms, like talking about the, the operation is also something that you have to keep in mind already at the beginning is how do you want to handle like the whole, the whole um, um, system, because in, in cold rooms, um, it is very crucial, like, um, for example, we are monitoring uh, not only the inverters, the whole input side, but also the cold room itself, because, um, and, and here I, I mentioned the door, um, openings or closings, like in a technical room, okay, it's um, about seeing, did somebody go in, did somebody go out? But in a cold room, this is very important because as soon as somebody goes in, uh, heat comes in. And um, if you do that all the time, uh, this, will meet the this will mean the performance will, will lower. Um, um, yeah, very much. So this is something that all has to be considered while planning the system and should also be, be monitored during operation because at that point you can say, okay, somehow my whole system is not performing and um, I can see it is due to the handling of the cold room. So yeah, basically planning, also planning a few years ahead and um, monitoring the, the operation, how the, the cold rooms are being handled is very important, I think. Thank you very much, Max. Um, maybe this question is primarily focused to, to Titus and Jibril and, and, and maybe uh, Max will have some, uh, some additional comments, but um, there was an interesting article a few, few weeks ago by, uh, by one of the leading um, investors in CNI projects in Africa. Um, a little bit alarming, um, where they realized that actually their, their, the installations that they had financed were most of the time systematically underperforming compared to what uh, had been promised on the spec sheets or what had been promised by uh, the developers and the, the PC company. Um, I would like to, to ask you, Titus and Gibral, um, what if this happens? What, what are your solutions for projects where you have provided equipment or where you have uh, been in charge of the EPC and, and the development of the project? Um, what can you say to bring some peace of, uh, peace of mind to, to people um, who are about to take a long-term commitment with you and uh, they need some, uh, um, some, some safety in planning their future? Maybe start with Titus. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so, John, I think that's um, I honestly saw the article and it was quite interesting. And um, I think it's essentially what is happening in the markets. And um, we've seen it before, we've heard about it before. And um, what is happening with that is that it comes to uh, uh, two main things. That is one, uh, the choice of technology and also the choice of the supplier. When it comes to the choice of technology is that um, there is actually need to, uh, I'm not only talking about the PV modules, but also the inverters and um, other components as well. There is also need to really invest so much into um, uh, basically the technical due diligence and uh, finding out on um, the reliability of the equipment. I'll give a case, uh, the likes of uh, the institutions like uh, PVN, there's also uh, ITC, there is also TUV, they actually do, um, uh, there is a uh, uh, long-term reliability uh, for major equipment like inverters and uh, also PV modules. And um, when it comes to uh, certification of equipment is that the basic IC certification will actually not give assurance for long-term reliability. That is why there is need to do an extensive or other uh, long-term reliability test that is in control chambers. And, um, and uh, the, the, the fact that we are giving 30 years uh, uh, power warranty or uh, 12 years product warranty, that means that we are really confident about the equipment that we are providing to the customer. And we've done our internal technical due diligence. And also we also partnered with third-party institutions like um, what I mentioned. 
that is uh, number one. Then number two, the second aspect is also the choice of the supply because there is also need to, uh, let's assume that it happened, let's say it's a Jinko solar panel that is actually, uh, there's a claim that is underperforming. So the best thing to do is ideally to report um, uh, to the supplier. And um, when it comes to uh, the choice of the supplier, the key aspect is the because most of the failures, like now PV modules in this respect, happens usually uh, at the midlife of the project, that is five to 10 years. So if the supplier supplies right now, then the project after five years, it fails, but the supply is bankrupt. So then that means that you are basically up nowhere. Yes, you have a 25 years product warranty or a power warranty, but you can't claim it anyway because the supplier is uh, under. So that aspect of bankability also plays a very important role. That's why it takes more of into uh, looking more into the technical due diligence of the technology, the equipment, and also the supply. Thank you, Titus. Jibril, I hope you have not had any unhappy customers so far, uh, but what uh, if, what would no. be the solutions you can bring? No, I think, uh, look, John, from our side, I, the experience has been very different uh, as compared to um, what we, I mean, what we saw on the on the report. Now, um, most of the plants that we've had have really um, um, produced what we expected, and some have produced more than what we expected. And and I think this is what uh, Titus had just mentioned that when you use um, a reliable supplier, such as Jinko and other tire one uh, inverters and battery storage manufacturer, um, you, you get this, um, uh, if you don't use these uh, suppliers, this is, these, are the same, these are the problems that you get into. I, I would say that, look, most of the funders and financiers um, do not have uh, a lot of uh, technical uh, experience. Hence, either they rely on a third party and so forth. But because they they are geared towards um, a high return on uh, their IRRs, so they want to build a solar PV at the lowest cost possible. Hence, the rationale of you know uh, getting us ten uh, you know uh, floating on RFQ. And then the bid uh, ends up uh, becoming uh, a race to the bottom uh, of the price. And it is normally, uh, we've seen most of the projects awarded on pricing and not quality of component. Um, I mean, if you use Jinko today and someone else uses a, a third party um, module manufacturer in China, I would pay maybe 20% more and Hence, they are able to come back and be competitive on their APC pricing. But in the long run, the yield is not the same as what you get. You know, um, if so, if you work with the right suppliers, uh, you are definitely guaranteed to get what you expect, if not more. Number two, I think it has been the the issue of that many people have not uh, really considered uh, has been the climate change. Um, climate change has really ad ch uh, affected uh, a lot of um, uh, projects, especially because uh, you know you expect January to have some very good sunshine, and then you have rainfall in January. You know, so what you predicted from your um, uh, projection on the yield on the software and what the weather pattern looks like are two different things. Mm. Now, um, so that really has uh, impacted so much on a lot of yield. But having said that, we've seen uh, a different side where when we didn't expect the weather, the weather has worked uh, in, in, in favor. I mean, look, some of the industries that we provide solutions for, um, such as the hotel industry, during their peak season, and that's when the, our weathers are not the best, you know, when we expected very good sunshine, the weather's changed completely. And so the yield where you expected to fully um, uh, get a return on the investment, um, we are not getting that, but it's weather related. 
Um, lastly, but not least, I think also it's the, the issue of um, being a very recent um, documentation. We've seen that uh, particularly on the CNI, there's been a very uh, big challenge with the, the impact of COVID on businesses. Um, and many businesses have really um, had to reduce their, you know, the, the operations, some had, had to close completely. And so the systems, it's very difficult because now the, 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 the power plant has to ramp down because the, the load demand has gone down. So, um, and it's very difficult to, to point as to whether it is the, the plant not generating what is expected or, or so forth. So it's, it, it's a number of things, but I think first thing first, uh, our recommendation is to any financiers and funders, um, it, you're investing in, uh, in, in a solar power plant and you expect very good returns on it invest in the right components, the right suppliers. Um, you know, recently we, we saw very uh, ridiculous bids in the market. And, you know, we had to say, thank you very much. We are not further moving with the bid. We are not interested because what the, the clients have been promised, it's, it's unattainable with, with, with the, the current cost of materials. So uh, APCs are forced to go and pick modules from China that have been in the warehouses for quite a very long period of times, just, just to come and install them here. And hence, you, you don't get what you, you expected. Um, so our recommendation has always been work with the best EPCs, regardless of the price, and guaranteed component supplies such as Jinko. Very strong, uh, very strong message. Um, Max, on your side, I don't know if um, if you if you can add something on on this topic, and and maybe me uh, taking the the liberty to ask you an additional question. Um, in your case study, you you mentioned some uh, curative uh, maintenance. You identified a problem that happened, and you managed to fix it. Um, are your solutions also able to do some uh, preventive uh, operations uh, improvements by identifying things that you think could be improved and trying to apply those solutions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Maybe just a few words um, to the to the questions before. Um, we, we are in the very good position that we can say, okay, we can, um, since we don't um, supply components of the solar systems, uh, except for the monitoring, of course, uh, I can say, like, from a neutral position, um, it is worth it investing into quality, because we are monitoring both. We are monitoring low quality, high quality solar systems, and from our experience, you can really see um, the the systems with with high quality components they they just perform better they have less technical problems so in the end um, the the initial price may be higher but it will turn out to be cheaper on the long run so th so this is something that we can as a monitoring company say um, we would recommend it to to everyone and uh, both Titus and Jibril have mentioned it and I can just say yes I would also um, um, say that from our side. Um, so that was just on the last question. And yes, um, I mean, of course, once there's a problem detected, uh, it is, it is um, faster to, to react on it uh, with a remote monitoring system because you can see, okay, that's the problem. I have to send this technician with that equipment. Um, but uh, it's even better if it doesn't, uh, doesn't occur, the problem. So there are some patterns in, in, with some of the inverters um, that you can say, okay, as soon as they have this, this specific patterns, and there may be some problems coming on later. So there's, um, when we can say, okay, now we should have a closer look at that system, make a check and uh, the same on batteries. So it's not like the battery just breaks. Um, it, it shows, okay, like when you monitor on cell level, you can see, okay, there's one cell underperforming. So you know, okay, on the long run, this will make, will have an impact on the whole system. So this is where you can say, okay, now you have the time, please check the batteries. There are some, some measures you can take or maybe even replace that one battery cell. And then this will, yeah, 
in the end not lead to a whole standstill of the system. So yes, there are um, certain things that can be done uh, even before the, the actual problem occurs. Thank you. And um, I'm looking at the clock. We are way over time, uh, but very, very interesting conversation again today. Um, I'd like to ask each one of you uh, to be very brief, very short, straight to the points. If you had like uh, one piece of advice um, on top of the one that you all agree on for choosing for uh, top quality equipment, one piece of advice for, for people who want to go solar at, uh, at their businesses, at their homes, or maybe even uh, develop a large scale project, um, what do they need to take away from you today? Titus, let's start with you, but we keep it short. <laughs> Okay, so um, John, just to give a summary on my side, is it, um, I'll just try to summarize what uh, Max and also Jibril said, that uh, based on the challenges, that there are two main aspects um, of our projects. That is one in the CapEx. I, I know that is basically most uh, customers would actually look into. Then the other aspect is also the cost of energy, that is uh, long term. So um, ideally for any project is that the two considerations need to be, um, uh, need to be well studied and uh, well, uh, uh, that is uh, to be uh, very clear because once you know that, because ideally like Mark said, that the low cost, the low initial cost does not basically mean the low cost of energy. And uh, basically the competition, what I'm thinking is that the competition nowadays for most APCs should not be based on only the CapEx cost, because that is basically what is happening, but rather should be on the long term or other life, uh, uh, the liberalized cost of energy. So, so that means that uh, that would be more of a fair level ground uh, that is comparing on um, either high cost, high quality or low cost, low quality equipment. Thank you. Jibril. I know it's a difficult exercise, but one key uh, takeaway for people here today that you want to share with them. Yes, um, look, I think uh, anyone interested in uh, PV or any uh, commercial industrial clients uh, keen on uh, installing solar PV. Um, solar is definitely, um, we are now and it's also the future, it is inevitable. The future of power is decentralized and it will be decarbonized. Solar PV will lead to this. Um, you come on board now or in 10 years, you will still come on board. Um, the beautiful part about this is that um, uh, no investments, uh, I mean, in terms of technology, there's so much R&D that has been done for the likes of Jinko that have invested so much uh, to uh, bring the technology. Those in the African market space, uh, this technology has been proven, has been you know, invested for very many years. All we have to do now is plug and play. And many would say, well, solar is very expensive, but that is not the case because now there is financing. You do not need to invest in the solar. You do not need to take the risk. You do not need a technical expertise. We will come invest and we will operate the plant and we will give you less at a discounted rate from either the national grid or the diesel jet set that you're using. There is no reason uh, no one should not go to solar. After all, the sun will always shine every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. And finally, Max, key takeaway from you for our listeners. Yeah, difficult actually to add something uh, to what you said before, because I can only agree with that. And uh, yeah, I, I don't want to uh, go into uh, like quality or again say how important it is to, to also um, operate the systems in a, in a good way with monitoring but um, maybe again like yeah solar is the way to go but as soon as you decide to go into solar take a little bit of time do a good planning think think ahead don't think what do I need now think about okay what may I need in the future and then take some time to select the partners that you want to work with the kind of business model that you want to go in so yeah you should go into solar but don't just jump into it, take a little bit time to, uh, to plan. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Yes, let me just take the opportunity to thank our uh, speakers uh, again today and also to thank all the, all the people who have joined us today. 
um, for this uh, interesting session. As I said, uh, Leoncy will be in touch with everybody to follow up on um, and share the recording and the uh, the slides from today. And what I will do is I will keep on this session open for one more minute so that if you have a last burning question for one of our speakers, please drop it in the Q&A section. We will share that list of questions with every one of them. So you will be able to continue the discussion. Gentlemen, uh, and dear listeners, I wish you a wonderful rest of the day, and I thank you again for joining us today.